sitting in front of the screen watching this, you are utilizing your myofascial system. Even if you're sitting fairly still, you still use your muscles and fascia to posturally support you. Every movement we do is myofascial too. So muscles and fascia are involved and there is no question about it. If you have been involved in some sort of training, you have more or less consciously trained your muscles. Now to train muscles consciously, we need to know something about their properties and a quality we all know about is muscle is contractile. So it can concentrically, isometrically and eccentrically contract and I have certainly used these qualities consciously in training. So that's a good thing. And now we also know more about fascia. So you have been training your fascia all along since you were tiny. The old Greeks have utilized their fascia with expertise when they were throwing discus or uh, spears. So that's not what I do, but I, as you probably could see just right now, but what I do, I utilize my fascial system consciously in movements now and I had to change my intention. So how do you do that? So I had to learn more about fascial properties reading. So a lot of wonderful research is now available about fascia and fascial properties. So I've been reading about it and then moving, reading, interpreting, moving again, going back to reading and so forth. And from there, I extracted eight fascial qualities that I feel are really relevant in movement and developed training techniques from there. So the movements I do or we do at Art of Motion, they are still myofascial, but we are emphasizing qualities in with certain techniques and in certain movements, sometimes emphasizing more properties of muscles and sometimes more the qualities of fascia. So to make this clearer and tangible, I would like to give you three examples and I will keep it very simple so it's clear. The first example will be focusing on the contractile qualities of muscles, strengthening muscles in different ways. The second example is focusing on fascia. So it, it will be a myofascial movement, but it's bringing a fascial quality to the forefront, which is glide. Fascia is viscoelastic and the liquid quality of fascia assists glide and slide. So surfaces can slide against one another. The third movement is utilizing the viscoelastic quality of fascia so in, as in elastic movement capacity of fascia. So you can join me if you like. The exercises are done in high kneeling. The first one being very muscularly oriented is a sit back. So if you like, you can sit back now with the pelvis centered, the upper body upright without sitting all the way down. So keep your hips above the heels. Now your quadriceps muscles are right now working isometrically. Your hip extensors are also working isometrically. If you, you probably feel that already. If you're coming up very, very slowly, you have a good sense off your quadriceps working concentrically across the knee. So we have the quadriceps muscles working eccentrically across the knee joints and then isometric now and then concentrically on the way up. The hip extensors of course as well but sometimes quadriceps is just a little bit more um, present. So see how that feels. It's called a sit back and I'm focusing on muscular strength, eccentrically, isometrically, concentrically strengthening my quadriceps muscles. Now, is fascia involved? Of course. It changes the angles of my joints, it decelerates my movements, and it also transfers force, which is very easy to feel in the lower leg. So let's do that one more time. So sit back, myofascial movement, but muscles are in focus. 
Therefore, I do it very, very slowly. I stay upright in my upper body, so I'm really loading my quadriceps. Now, changing the focus and going to that liquid quality of fascia, fascia as a sliding layer between different structures, I change the way I move. So first of all, I'm leaning forward a little bit. Quadriceps is still working across the knees. Hip extensors are working across the hip joints there at the back. But I'm taking some load off the quadriceps muscles so that they are not quite working as hard. The fascial tissue isn't quite as um, taut as much tension in it. So from here, I'm tilting my pelvis back, which changes the relationship between the quadriceps muscles. The vasti, vastus medialis, lateralis, intermedius, they cross the knee. The rectus femoris crosses the hip joint. So as I'm tilting the pelvis back, I'm changing the length in the rectus femoris and somewhere there is glide. One needs to slide over the other. So the vasti stay relatively consistent in their tone and then I'm changing the length in the rectus femoris and somewhere is some gliding and sliding happening. happening. So the rectus, the rectus femoris can slide over underlying tissue, just in that quadriceps example, and I'm bringing that sliding, gliding quality of fascia to the forefront. Still strengthening, of course, my quadriceps, hip extensors, abdominals. So now let's go to another quality, viscoelasticity. So using that property of fascia that stores kin kinetic energy and then releases it and we have an elastic buoyant movement. I need some pretension first. So I'm tilting the pelvis back as much as I can with my knees on the floor and I'm tensioning the fascial tissue across the hips. Now I do engage muscles, so my abdominals, my hip extensors are engaged, pre-tension in front. I let go of my muscle engagement and I sit back, bounce, come up, tilt the pelvis back and then sit back, bounce up. So I have pre-tension in front of the hips and then sit back and use the elasticity in the fascia across the knee and the hips to make it a very buoyant, elastic movement. And I'm not even feeling my quadriceps muscles now. So myofascial focus, still muscles are working, but I'm utilizing a unique quality of fascia, which is in its viscoelasticity. I hope that made a lot of sense. So we're always training muscles and fascia together, but we are emphasizing different qualities to bring either muscle more into training focus or fascia. Thank you.